Hey, we, as is customarily the case when I am in front of you, that means that we have a lot to talk about. That is always the case. I am here for speed, right? Uh, Jamie, unfortunately, will not be joining us today. He had some things he had to take care of, but he has selected me to subject all of you to. So with that in mind, let's get this bad boy rolling. We're going to start out with our purpose, as always, serving agents and impacting lives. Right now, there is a tremendous amount of change in our industry, and it is our goal as a brokerage to serve you as agents so that you can impact the lives of your clients in turn. By serving you as agents, one of the big things we think is hyper important right now is for you to have the information you need as the changes come through so that you are an industry leader. And that is super important right now. And you may be called on to lead other people in the, in the business. That is not your responsibility normally. Your responsibility is your clients. However, there may be times when you may have be asked to help. We want to ensure that you have all the information necessary to do so, so that you can truly impact the lives of your clients. With that in mind, I want to remind us of our mission to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth leaving. And those are all very near and dear to us at Cover uh, With that, I want to talk about the play of the week this week. And this one is. Um, we have all a whole variety of different plays of the week, and this one is one I think is, like so many of them, super impactful. But it's important to know who we're in business with as much as anything else and what they do and why they're here, etc. And I want to talk about Kim Counters this week, who was the play of the week last week. This is Jamie uh, from Jamie. We all run into big hurdles in life that we need to overcome. This week marks the 13th year of Kim's sobriety. She credits her focus on serving others as a key. Not only does it feel good to help people, but she says it's harder to slip into the dangerous self-talk when you are focused on the needs of others. You may have seen Kim volunteering in the NICU at Ridges, the Shakopee Women's Prison, or as ICE Director on the LHA Board for the last for four years. Kim's ability to serve others has helped lead Team Counters to a thriving family business with her husband, Craig and son Ben built on strong relationships that began in 1986. Kim likes to share with others a great lesson learned. Pause. She often questions herself, does this need to be said? Does it need to be said right now? And does it need to be said by me? And in making those choices, she's impacted all of us and those around her. So with this play of the week, Kim displays one of our core values at Keller Williams impact. We strive to give freely of our time and talents to positively influence other lives. We are grateful to partner with such giving agents like Kim, who puts so much energy into the community around. Let's give Kim a big hand. All right, with that, I'm going to call up my good friend Melissa, who well, you'll not be seeing as much of today as some other days, but definitely, uh, definitely a lot to say right no now. No walk-up music? No, <laughs> That's Jamie's bit. Um, I'm going to be very brief because you're lucky. You guys have a personal form to overview today from the amazing Greg Hartos, but I would like to take this opportunity to give a plug for a chance where you can earn 1.5 free continuing education hours. We will hear our pers and, and discuss perspective today, but hearing things a second time and getting a second perspective is always very helpful. So I encourage you to sign up for it through the Minnesota Association of Realtors website. Um, on Thursday, they are going to Mankato and Rochester. So for those who are listening on Zoom, if you may want to attend those. Next week, they're holding sessions at the Minneapolis office and also at SPAR. And August 7th, they're going out to Marshall and Wilmer, for those of you who are on, on Zoom. So please sign up for that and uh, get yourselves educated. Melissa, I have a quick question on that. Yeah. So there's 100 people out of the brokers that didn't finish their CE till June, and it's only July. You are asking them to actually start your CE. Like, I am. June of next year? It's for free. It's for free. It's for free. Are they going to jump on it? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, baby. 
join the 10 night class, you are 10% done. All right, with that in mind, my good friend Toddy, no, we won't play the baby, baby, baby music. Thank you. It's just all you. Okay. Um, so, there's a flyer on your um, table, and Jenny so kindly wanted me to remind everyone to flip it over, because there's two sides. So, um, just to touch on these, we touched on them last week, but they're very important and big events coming up that are super beneficial to you and your business. So, um, seventh inning stretch is coming on July 31st. Again, it will be a day with your leadership team to um, reassess, energize, and recommit to your business. So, Olivia will be talking on your big why, um, and Jason and Jamie and I and everybody else will be touch touching on a whole bunch of other things as well. So, it'll be really beneficial for you to sign up. It will be ran like an event, and there will be food. And we know everybody loves food, so come on. Um, next is next Wednesday. We have a really big um, Winning Wednesday. We're going to have a dialogue panel. Um, it'll be a really good team meeting. We're having our KW uh, PR barbecue potluck party. Um, and then it will be followed up by <coughs> the KW Connectors, a painting event that's actually going to be hosted by our very own Melanie McCallum. So that will be really fun, and you should come to that. So if you could please scan the link to sign up. Um, it is a potluck style, so KWPR will be hosting all of the uh, meat and the grilling. Um, but if everybody could bring a side or something to share, that would be great. Um, and then last but definitely not least is our first annual KWPR Luau. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a spinoff of our big award ceremony that we do in February, but this is going to be a midway through the year award ceremony. They're going to be awards voted um, by agents for agents. So some funny things might be like, you know, best hair might go to Shane Corn <laughs> or things like that. Um, and so mark your calendars for August 15th. It will be really fun. Come in your best luau attire. There might be a prize for that. Um, and then we're also working on getting some PW Cares things put together. Um, we do have a goal to raise $10,000 for KW Cares by August 15th. Um, and if you do that, Olivia will hold dogs. We can make <laughs> pie. Uh, we're going to have some opportunities to maybe pie Jamie in the face um, for a certain amount of money. So it'll be really fun. And some of you have like five ones, so this is going to be real fun. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Are you going to wear a hazmat suit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, sorry, I lied. There is actually one more thing. The carnival is coming on August 29th. Right now, we have 10 people signed up, so that's super awesome. And remember, this is just a super easy plug and play event for you. All of the marketing is provided for you. Um, all of the festivities and everything will be provided. All you need to do is sign up and pay $99 um, and show up, invite your clients. There's going to be a smart plan that's going to start on August 1st that you can meet in the training room. And Jason will walk you through step by step how to start it on August 1st so it won't be confusing. Just be here and start the smart plan. Get your clients here. And there's going to be um, invitations that are going out and follow up. So, and remember, it's not in who shows up, it's in a follow-up. So, there you go. Thank you. We have so many things going on. It's super important to be aware of them, have them on your calendar. And you can always find a calendar on the way out. There's a calendar available for you so you can see all of the great things that are going on. Uh, with that, I want to bring up my good friends. Brian and Drake, I have no music. We may have discussed that, no music, but uh, you guys can sing if you want. Woo! You want me to hand that for you, bro? I will let you Okay, I got you. <laughs> All right, uh, I see some new faces out there, so I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Drake Duckworth. I'm an in house lender. I work on the summer team with Brian Sunder with New American Funding. Uh, we do uh, mortgages obviously and then we also help out with some marketing on the side so if you ever need any you know social media content we have a big portal and all kinds of stuff but aside from all that we also have uh, marketing that we do after your loan closes and so i'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the 36 touch that gary kelly talks about all the time and i don't know if it's increased by now it might be 55 or something else <laughs> and, uh, but uh, what we do post close is we send out uh, holiday cards, birthday cards, purchase anniversary cards. They're all co-branded with your face and us right on there with you. And since we're a direct lender, we service our loans for the life of the loan. So that means you're gonna be getting all kinds of touches for the 30 years that they have that loan with us. And so, uh, 
And then on top of that, one thing that's underrated with our post-close campaign is that we co-brand all of our mortgage statements too. So every time that they go to you know look at their bill, their their mortgage statement, you know once a month, they're going to see your face again. And so it's all about staying top of mind and constantly be re being reminded that you're in the real estate business, and we're here to help you with that. So if you got any questions about that, feel free to stop by our office. We're happy to show you all the different marketing things that we do. Uh, so maybe two months ago we started. Uh, we talked about the Minnesota housing. I don't know if you can read this, so I'll kind of point. Uh, the legislature came up with a first generation ownership, a down payment assistance program. 50 million of it went to Minnesota housing. And you know, Minnesota, it's just another program for them. They just jumped on it. Uh, and finally, the 100 million from first gen homebuyers community fund just started up in June. It's the first time we had a chance to talk about it. I'm going to say it's a much better program than Minnesota Housing's program. Some fine points to it. Uh, one of the borrowers has to have uh, either never owned or their parent has never owned or they were foreclosed on. Uh, and the best part of this, 10% uh, or 32,000, so 10% of the purchase price or a max of 32,000 available for down payment for whatever funds they need to purchase. Uh, much better than Minnesota housing, 20% of that gets uh, forgiven every year. So in five years, it's forgiven, <clears throat> all right? Uh, Minnesota housing is like half in the first 10 years, the other half in the next 10 years. Okay, so this is the second page, or second, the bottom of the, the sheet, startup income. They use Minnesota Housing's income, 124 grand or less, and they're going to qualify for this. Uh, and it can be layered with other down payment, not Minnesota Housing's uh, down payment, but there are potentially you know community funds that can also be layered with this. So I mean, they can get into you know into a home with getting 32 grand and maybe other funds. That, on top of that, so it's a. Uh, but again, they need to be a first-time, first-generational buyer. Okay, a couple things with this program: they need to apply, they need to get approved, they need to do their online ed education. Once they have all that, then they go to the community, the home buyers community, and apply. All right, so there is a formal process <laughs> to this. You're not meeting somebody on Sunday at an open house and buying a house on Wednesday. All right, there. But so we need to get them into the pipeline, let's say, and get them approved, get them to apply. Then they've got 90 days of reserved funds to find a house, and you can ask for another 60 days after that. So there's a formal process, uh, but not everybody qualifies, obviously. But if you've got anybody even remotely uh, interested or who could qualify, it's an awesome program. So let's keep that in mind. And if you have anything, uh, let us know. And to go right along with all those awesome events that the Market Center is providing for you guys, we have an event for you guys too. Uh, Chat GPT, it's been you know topic of discussion for the last year and a half, maybe two now. And uh, Chat GPT is great for your business. So all kinds of things you can do to use it to automate, you know, social media content and uh, various things. So. We invite you to attend next Thursday at 11 a.m. Um, the 25th, we have a, a ChatGPT uh, class from our very own Megan with New American Funding. She's gonna, she's gonna go uh, over all the different tools that you can use with ChatGPT. It's gonna be probably about a half hour class. So not a whole, you know, it's not gonna take up a whole lot of your time. And uh, it, it's gonna be a Zoom link. So we'll, we posted that on the Facebook group yesterday. Uh, if you guys have, you know, if you're curious about that, just let me know and make sure you get that invitation. All right. Thanks. Any questions on any of that? Otherwise, uh, yeah, it's on Facebook and you can pop in and easy peasy. Thanks, guys. Thank you. A couple things come to mind as I'm thinking about these two things. First off, if you can't attend that Zoom, anytime you want to make an appointment with me, I'll be happy to go over how to use ChatGPT. It is literally my best friend. 
um, we, uh, we, we drive right to work together. Um, <laughs> secondly, uh, when, when we're talking about a first time home buyer program, what an excellent program to promote to your sphere if you have buyers who are kind of sitting out there and you're not quite sure where they're at. That is a fantastic way to build a smart plan targeted to a specific audience. And if you know who your buyers are and they're in that possible thing, setting up a smart plan that's going to remind them of that on a regular basis can really help you get in touch with them. So I always think that's super important. These guys are giving you movers, the opportunity to make a mover, to make an offer for immediate response on a regular basis and answer your client's questions without having to do it yourself. Uh, with that in mind, my good friend Greg, I'm going to say hello to you. has promised to be uh, humorous today, <laughs> but not brief. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Has anybody uh, heard that there might be some changes coming to our industry? No one's heard any of that. We've all been under a rock. We've all been a little bit. A couple of important dates to remember. Uh, we're going to be going over the new forms. Here, which will be available for use August 1st. So when you log in the transaction desk on August 1st, the new forms will be up and running. Another key date to remember is August 17th. <clears throat> that's going to be like, and I don't, that's going to be like the day that your business changes. And why is that? And that's the day that compensation offers go off of the MLS. So when you go look at a listing and you see all of the good stuff that's on there and you go, I wonder what ABC is offering for co-op broker compensation on this listing and darn it, I can't find it. It's because it ain't going to be there anymore <laughs> in our marketplace, in our marketplace, uh, the, the lawsuit that most of the broke the, the franchise owners, many of the brokers, uh, the NER uh, have settled, it have included that agreement. There are some MLSs, not in our marketplace, that are saying we believe that is a, uh, uh, a lack of freedom of expression and, and uh, we're going to continue making offers of compensation on our MLS for our agents on our listings. There is nothing illegal about a seller deciding to compensate their agent, their listing agent, and a seller also offering to pay somebody else to bring them a buyer, whether they're representing that buyer, assisting that buyer, facilitating for that buyer, whatever it might be. And so there are some MLSs that are saying, we're gonna be, the, we, we volunteer to be the guinea pig on this deal. We are not gonna change our MLS processes. Our MLS here, a little bit more conservative. I'm on the board of governors of the local MLS, so I'm kinda, I know what's going on there. Um, we have taken a conservative approach. Nobody likes spending needless money on attorney's fees, right? Uh, to pay somebody else's attorney's fees. And so we are not going to work. The offer of commissions on MLS is going away. Any questions on that? So if you've got a listing now and there's an offer of compensation on that listing, August 17th, that's getting erased from all of the listings. Yes, sir. Are you still going to be able to go back and see what compensation is offered previously? Um, probably through history and stuff, but we're supposed to wipe it off moving forward. I mean, they, I, they shouldn't be able to go out and wipe out history, right? <laughs> but it's a loss. So, anyways. I would print everything that you think you might. I would print everything that you think you might want now. Or PDF it. I'm thinking about comps in the future right. for trying to price things out and understand. What and that might be effective in the next two months worth of comps, but beyond that, it's not going to be a field that's searchable. Okay. Right? And you're not going to call every listing agent and say, Jason, I see you had a listing <coughs> in Burnsville and it sold two months ago. What was your broker off was your seller authorizing you to pay the cooperating broker a fee? So uh, anyway. The, the document that you have in front of you, and I, we've got a few more. I put it on every other seat or whatever. This is going to be your new best friend moving forward. Does anyone need one? 
It is, it is your way to verify either prior to an offer being submitted or as part of your offer to confirm what the seller through the listing broker is offering as compensation to you. You would agree that when it was on MLS before, that was a unilateral unilateral offer of compensation to whoever brought in a buyer. If they were a buyer broker, there might be a certain fee. And if they were a facilitator for a buyer, there might have been a different fee, higher, lower, or none. So we're not going to have that anymore. So the way to verify for you buyer's agents, you're going to want to make sure this is part of your file. I just, I, I got a showing scheduled today for a property. First one it says, it says that there's no buyer compensation fee. And it says in there, please make sure you put in your offer how much buyer compensation fee you would like. <laughs> We're going to talk about that when we get to the, the, the contract forms. Yes. Who signs this? Well, uh, Melissa pointed out to the association there was a lack right. of a broker signature line. You guys can't, uh, can't, uh, um, make that a binding contract between you and the other agent because commissions are broker to broker. Right. Melissa's gonna have to sign the okay. Now, whether you guys create this on each listing of yours and then you send it over to Melissa to sign so that you have it yourself, so when you get those requests, you'll be able to just forward it. Okay. Now, the danger is, is if you change that at some point down the line, and I don't think that that's gonna happen in rare cases, right? Because when you sat down with the seller, you figured it out, and if the seller made a price adjustment, your commission got adjusted, their commission got adjusted. Okay. But this is going to be your new best friend. I want you to all get paid on every deal. Unfortunately, there will be people that don't get these and assume something and didn't get paid. Because remember, it's going to go off MLS. There's 22,000 agents. How many of them even know we had a lawsuit? Not all of them. How many brokers have taught their agents their stuff? Most of them haven't. So we want you to be educated. Okay. Yes, sir. So Greg, there is no space for a signature. That's what I exactly. It's, no, it's being updated. Okay. All the way up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Melissa <laughs> caught that mistake. And so they're going to be sending out a correction to the corrected forms. So any questions on this? Again, buyer's agents, you're going to want to get it. Listing agents, you should have it available. <clears throat> because here's what's going to happen on August 17th. Commissions are wiped off. Agents are going to want to show your property and your phone's gonna start ringing. Hold on, I'll get to you in a second. Your phone is gonna start ringing. I suggest you pick it up. <laughs> because it's gonna be me saying, Steve, I'd like to show your listing this afternoon. My buyer has committed to me, and for today's example, and I understand we have competitors in here. So today's examples, we're gonna use a 3% buyer broker compensation. Okay, that's what we're gonna use. It's not a standard, it's not suggested, I don't know what our competitors do. For today's treat teaching, we're using a 3% buyer broker compensation. So Steve, I'm gonna show your listing. My buyer's committed to me, and you don't need to know what that number is, but I need to know what your seller is willing to pay on the MLS or as part of your listing agreement, and your answer could be one of a number of things. It could be zero. It could be Greg gets 3%. Oh, that, great, it matches what my buyer, it could be my seller's offering three and a half percent. Well, Steve, I can't take more than what I contracted for, so you know your seller's not gonna have to pay that extra half percent out to me. So I'm going to have to call Steve. If you have listings, you should pick up your phone because if somebody might not show your property because they couldn't get a hold of you. Now we're gonna try to have other processes in place so that when an agent has a question regarding that, we can make that answer for them. The front desk is gonna have a list of their listings and the address and the compensation being offered to a buyer broker. Yes, sir. I see it doesn't have Keller Williams. Uh, uh, not yet. This is just a Okay. When I'm it goes through a transaction desk, look, we're going to have to fill out our company name on here. I'm going to ask that we don't put it up here. Tell me if I'm wrong. If it's up there, oh. I can't post it as a supplement. You can't, you can't post it as a supplement anyway. You, mm -hmm. You're not going to use showing time, you're not going to use MLS, you're not going to use supplements, you're not going to put three three beans on the counter, you're not going to you're not going to get I, the list price in three dollars. Can I fill it out, have it signed, and leave it in the folder? Yes. yes. Hold on, we'll get there in a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how we how we communicate our offer of compensation? Look, I don't think the market's going to change much. There's over a thousand brokers in the Minnesota state of Minnesota. 
They've always done different things. They've always, you know, they had to. MLS entry only, right? Discount brokers, limited service brokers. They've been there before. Additional people might try to experiment with that, right? That, that's the free market. I don't know why we lost the lawsuit, but we did. So, can, how can I show my offer of compensation on a sign writer? You could have a sign writer that says, buyers, agents, welcome, 3%. You could have something on the counter. Buyers, agents, please note, compensation offered 3%. You could, you could email out every agent in town. I don't think we're going to want to do that. Uh, you know, hey, show my listing, here's what it is. So, yes, we can communicate it, not on the MLS in any way, shape, or form, or an MLS tool like Showing Time. We can do it on our own website, and we're talking to, Jason's going to be talking to KW to see what they confirm what their plans are so that we can do that on our listings on our website. So, some of this is a work in progress, and oh, by the way, they're still negotiating stuff. The Department of Justice is putting their nose in and would like some impact on the lawsuit that's already been agreed upon, but not judged, uh, uh, has a final uh, agreement of the court. So we're working on stuff. Some states have created forms, changed the forms, and changed the forms again before they even start using them. So we're gonna, we're, you know, I was here six weeks ago. We showed you the forms changes once already. Now we're showing them to you a second time. And then we're going to talk about how to use it. We will probably have another meeting. Melissa and I were talking. Like in three weeks, now that you guys have seen the forms and have chances to think through it and have questions, we're going to come back and probably have a Q&A for some period of time. So we want you, you, you have to worry about you and your client and, and, and making sure you get paid. Unfortunately, our competitors aren't going to know what they're doing. I'm worried about you and your representing your buyer, representing your client. And that's what we're here for. If somebody chooses to work with an agent that doesn't know what they're doing, God bless them. We have a Zoom question. Um, when will the forms be available online? August 1st. Now we're going to get you. We're going to get you the new listing contract, the new buyer rep contract, and the purchase agreement. Those are the three that you're going to work with every day. We're going to. Create, we're going to send them to you, and it's going to have to say either draft or do not share or something on them, right? They're, we don't want you using them yet, but I want you to have the chance to read them, review them, and help understand them, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Is that good? Let us know what you need, right? All right, so there are 19 forms that changed, and there's a couple of new forms. This is one of the new ones. This is the most important one. We all good with that one? So Jason's going to drive for me. The first form is a listing contract. Ooh, the most important one. Now, keep in mind, our old listing contract, the seller listed his, his property with you for a commission of X, and then authorized you to offer compensation to a buyer broker of whatever, and or a, uh, a, unrepresent, uh, a buyer working with an agent a facilitator in an unofficial representation role, okay? So that's what our listing agreement was like before. Pretty neat, pretty clean, pretty easy. We've made some changes. So anything in yellow is a <coughs> change. So we're only going to cover the changes in these documents today. So total broker compensation, line 122. If seller agrees to pay buyer's broker's compensation <coughs> directly to buyer broker, that, and I'll tell you how that's <laughs> going to happen here in a minute then seller's obligation to pay my commission, my listing commission, as specified on lines 9, 119 to 120, shall be reduced by the amount paid up to blank dollars or blank percent of the selling price. So Greg, how is this going to be used? Let's say an agent writes a purchase agreement. And let's say this agent has talked to their buyer and said, I'm the best agent in the world for you, and I charge a fee of 4%. That's my fee. I'm an awesome agent. Or I'm I'm willing to work for 2%, right? Doesn't matter what the number is, but I'm going to use four as the example. So, if this, so the purchase agreement comes in where the PA says, seller agrees to pay buyer's broker. Well, that means a payment from seller to buyer's broker, not seller to listing broker to buyer's broker. It means a direct line. We good so far? So if that compensation, again, is 4%, 
So I've signed a listing for, let's say, 7%, because you guys are all worth more than that. Uh, that 4% that my seller would pay can be reduced, but I can put a cap on that. So what if I listed the property at 7%? And some agent brings in an offer where it says seller agrees to pay them 6%. Well, seven minus six is one. <laughs> Would you be happy with one? So we're saying to a seller, if an agent comes in with compensation of something over zero, if that's what the seller's offering, or some number, we were offering them something, but they wanted more, Mr. Seller, I agree to reduce my listing commission, but only up to a certain point. And maybe that certain point is 3% under our example today. We good so far? So seven minus three gives you? Four. We good with that. I know it gets confusing. Yes? I'm worried I'm gonna make it more confusing. So now don't ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say I have my, my commission that the seller's paid me, and I, as the listing agent, am already offering will say 3% to the buy side. Do I have to pay additional, like does that make me pay twice? Well, part of this is how you fill out your net, uh, the purchase agreement's filled out, part of this is how you do your net sheet. Because when there's a math problem and I'm the seller, yeah. uh, who should pay for your mistake? <laughs> so that's why we wanna make sure you understand that. That's why we're gonna get the forms out ahead of time. That's why we're gonna come back and talk. Okay. Okay. So it is possible another broker makes a request for more commission than what you've offered yes. publicly. Mm -hmm. And this says, Mr. Seller, look, I don't need to collect the full pile and then another pile, right? You and I agreed on this pile. He's chipping away at this and it might even be less or if it's more, I'm, I'm not willing to go, but my portion is going to be this irregardless of what we pay the other. Right. Okay. Good with that? Okay. So to be clear, this does not act in lieu of like a variable rate, uh, variable rate. Commission. No, variable rate commission isn't that. That would be an add-on to your yeah. listing contract. Any questions on this? So again, the, the lines are the same. The seller's going to pay a retainer fee up front. By the way, I think most more agents will get retainer fees. A total commission of, in our example today is seven percent or blank dollars. I always encourage you to put something in here. Ten thousand. I don't care. Uh, and then if your brokerage has a fixed brokerage commission, then you put that in. And again, because we have competitors in here today, I'm not going to name a number. We good? <laughs> Just put in X, whatever that X is for your brokerage. All right, scroll to the next part. Second, uh, and I hate when they have a, f uh, a new page in the middle of important stuff. <laughs> so okay, again, cooperating broker compensation. So this replaces the old seller, you know, the two Two boxes there. Uh, this, this changes that language slightly. Cooperating broker compensation. Of the total broker commission of 7%, broker shall or shall not offer compensation to cooperating brokers. If shall, the compensation to cooperating brokers shall be as follows. Check the box. And in our example, the seller is telling you to offer 3% of your total 7% or X dollars, whichever is greater to cooperating brokers. That part didn't change. Nor did the part cooperating brokers assisting the buyer. That didn't change. You, you could have the same numbers in here. You could have different numbers in here. You could have something here and nothing there. That's up, up to discussion. <laughs> Doesn't it seem like that section should be before the Totally. They're like the back. <laughs> yes, I feel the same way. Yay. Some things make sense in life and some things <laughs> don't. But this is the form that we have. Any questions on this? So that really didn't change other than some of this language to comply with the loss of yes. So on the previous stage, if sellers paying directly to buyer's broker, then you would be writing listing as a 3% and the seller would be paying out 3% directly. I'm going to encourage you to list homes like you always have in the past, the total commission. And I'm going to encourage you to encourage your, your sellers to offer compensation to buyers brokers. That gets your seller 100% of the buyers looking at the market, at their home. When you say to a seller, if a seller says to you, well, look, I want to offer nothing to a buyer broker, right? And a seller could do that. 
right? And then we would say, well, we went from 100 buyers, or 100% of the market, to, and you name the number. I don't write, is it 50%? Because there's going to be buyers out there that go, I can barely scrape up the down payment, the closing costs. I don't have room for a commission, so if there's a seller that's not going to pay a commission, don't show me the house. Now, you as an agent should not be making that judgment. Your client should be telling you, Ryan, don't show me these homes where the commission is not included because I love you and I think you work hard for me, but I can't pay you. Okay, uh, next part. We saw that. And these are the forms in their entirety, and we're showing you the changes. So I know. You're going, well, why'd you include all eight pages when I could just go to one? We want you to see the whole contract. And in case you have questions, we can refer back. Addendum or amendment to listing contract seller's concessions. Now, keep in mind, in our market, commissions are going away. I told you, in some markets, they're going to leave it on there. In some markets, they're taking the commission box off and putting seller concessions into the listing, the MLS listing. And so we've had to put it into our uh, um, uh, our listing contract purchase agreement amendment to listing. So what, what a concession is, look, have you ever listed a home where you've prepared the seller to pay the buyer's closing costs? I mean, right now you probably not, but you know, you're, the, the seller's going, I'm not paying a dollar of anything for anybody, right? But in the past you've gone, Mr. Seller, look, we got first time buyers, so you have generally little down, uh, they're going to need help with closing costs. So, Mr. Seller, when I did your net sheet, to keep in mind, you know, I did your mortgage payoff, your commissions, your state fee tax, your taxes, and I also put something in there, Ryan, under buyer's closing costs, because we're probably going to get offers where the buyer closing costs are in there. That's what's called a concession. So, a seller up front could say, hey, Ryan, let's offer, let's just publicize 2% buyer paid closing costs. Right? So you do it in your net sheet when you list the property, you show that. Now when an offer comes in, if there's nothing in there, then you don't, the seller has no expense. Some agents are going to use the concession field with their seller to say, hey, one of the ways we can legally publicize your willingness to help the buyer in the transaction is, will you pay concessions? And the seller says, well, what does that mean? Well, this is a way we could show the marketplace that for those buyers that are worried about making sure their agent gets paid, the seller is willing to pay concessions. Now we can't call it commissions. And we can't say, if we're gonna put, and I'll use an example, $300,000 house, three, in theory a 3% commission, nine grand, right? But a seller says, well, why don't I offer $9,001 as concessions for the buyer to use however they want. And there might be, you might get three offers on a property, Ryan, right, from three different buyer's agents. One buyer's agent says, I have an agreement with my, my buyer for 3% compensation, right? And by the way, $9,001 covers that. I'm good. There might be another broker that says to their buyer, look, I only, I'm going to negotiate a 2% fee with you. That's 6000 of the $9,001. You'll have $3,001 left to play with. Now, whether you use that for closing costs, drop the price, I mean, the net sheet's going to show how that all weighs out, right? And then there might be another broker that offered that, you know, his deal with his buyer is a 4% commission. So the $9,001 is going to cover most of that, but not all of that. So they're going to have to figure out how to work that out. But your sellers can put concessions, agree to pay concessions up front. Now, there is not going to be a field on MLS for that. But in your agent remarks, you can certainly put in there, and even maybe your public remarks, seller is offering concessions of 3% or $6,227 if it's a dollar amount. So that way, you as listing agents can have that information in your listing available to everybody else. Now, you don't want to do both, where on our website it says 3% commission, and then have concessions of $9,000 and have an offer come in with concessions of that because what's 3% plus 3% kids? It's not 3%. It's two offers of two different, although identical, I would argue, it's two offers of 3%, isn't it? So 
That's why we're going to come back in two weeks after you've had a chance, three weeks after you've had a chance to review these and think about these and we'll run some examples. Is that helpful? Is everybody good? All right, next question. <coughs> Addendum or amendment to listing contract buyer representation contract. Whether, it, you know, if you're preparing this at the time you're sitting down with the client for the first time and you're creating the contract and you're, and you're taking out this addendum at the same time, you check the addendum box. If we're two weeks into a transaction, I'm under a buyer rep agreement with you or uh, a listing contract with you and then we want to make a change to that old, two week old contract, you'll check the amendment box. It's an amendment to a pre existing document. And then we'll list what those changes are. So that form's available. Thank you, sir. Cooperating broker compensation agreement. We just covered that. I wanted to cover that first because it's going to be your friend or your enemy moving forward. Okay. So we've covered that one already. Thank you, sir. Buyer rep contract. Okay. This one. Uh, this is new language. In the past. Um, we had situations uh, where I had an agreement with my buyer to receive X dollars or X percent of compensation and they happened to fall in love with a house that offered more compensation or a bonus or I brought them to a builder who because I sold two of the builders homes I'm now in an escalated uh, commission with them or uh, eligible for a bonus or whatever it might be. This basically says the broker may not receive compensation for the brokerage services provided to the buyer from any source, buyer, seller, builder, whatever, that exceeds the amount that I negotiated with my buyer. So if my buyer rep agreement said 3% and there's a listing with a 3.5% commission, I need to turn to my buyer, probably as I'm showing them the home, and say, hey, Ryan, good news for you. Uh, remember our buyer broker agreement, 3%? This listing's offering me three and a half. As you know, Ryan, I can't accept more than that, more than the 3%. So it looks like you'll have a half a percent to play with someplace. Or there's a $5,000 bonus from the builder, right? That's gonna go to you, Ryan. And I think that's only fair, right? I shouldn't get more than when I negotiated with it. Now you might have a client that says, but Greg, I think you've been doing an awesome job. I can't believe how many homes you showed us. You've been no pressure. You've been really knowledgeable. You're the smartest guy in the world. Greg, we'd like you to get that extra half a percent. That's when I would take out the amendment or addendum to the listing or buyer broker agreement, right? And I should do that before I write the offer, not a week later when I go, oh, I'd like to get that extra money. Because <coughs> technically, we shouldn't pay you more than what you have contracted for. So are we good with this language? Perfect. Yes, sir. The connection piece between the seller understanding the buyer broker compensation, you probably already said it and I didn't hear you. Do they get a copy of this? How the heck do they? This is the, does the seller get a copy of the other brokerages buyer rep agreement? Correct. That's the question. Do I get a copy of your listing contract? You do not. Oh, so do you think you should get a copy of my buyer rep agreement? If I ask for it. <laughs> you can, look, you can ask all you want. <clears throat> nice try. You're not getting it. It's none of your business. So it's between you and Melissa to, to, to decide if you're going to. Uh, well, look, I mean, when, when a commission comes in here, if we've got too much money, right, then we're going to have to make a decision. It's, we're going to come and say, Chad, because you agreed to three. Looks like we got to pay three and a half. You know, we can't do that. I, I'm not going to be an accomplice to breaking the law, right? <laughs> so, Chad, we're going to send the money back to the buyer. So it's, it's based on the broker compliance that that's going to be regulated. Yep. So get the addendum signed preemptively or at the time of the... Before the contract the signed. Sure. Right. You, and by the way, you still need to do a compensation disclosure every time you write an offer for a buyer, right? Not after when the deal's accepted, before. Ryan, I'm writing an offer for you this afternoon. Remember our buyer broker agreement called for 3%. This listing's offering 2.7. So Ryan, you're going to hold three tenths of a percent to my brokerage that when we close or Brian. I'll waive that for you. Can you send me a buyer or seller? So you're going to have to address it still every time you write a PA. So that's why if you, they're going to allow you to collect more, right? You can't just, you know, don't tell them what they're signing and get paid more than I contracted, or now you're giving the okay. You should have an honest discussion with them. 
I know I'm brainstorming, these are crazy ideas, but let's just go over it real quick if you don't mind. So in the interim, because all of our CMS clients trust us at a high level, we're gonna write 100% buyer broker commission and then reduce it down to as low as X in writing out of the buyer broker contract, i.e. an email. Hey, congrats, we're going to work together. Here's your buyer broker contract. And oh, by the way, we're gonna reduce this down to as low as X percent should we choose to find a compensation yet. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, good. I'm glad you're willing to cut your feet because you can, I'm going to ask you to do that every time. Whatever you and I contract for, yeah. that's gospel. Now I get it. When you <laughs> see the house and there's not an offer and you don't want to, you know, you don't want, you want to wave and give them a favor. You're able to do that. I would not put any language that says I'm going to accept anything as low as 1%. In that email that I wrote it compliance. in any contract or any email. I'm, what if you showed me 500 houses? Are you still going to go down to 1%? Well, what I meant is, let's just say 3%, we use that example yeah. before. Let's say that's a, a number we like, right? But we're going to put 100% in the contract, so I don't have to monkey around with it. Well, wait, 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 wait. You're going to get 100% commission? <laughs> Absolutely. And it's... Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> so you're, you, you're going to convince me as a buyer that I'm going to pay you 100% of whatever yeah, it is? Yeah, all of our people trust us. Of course they're going to. If I tell them I'm going to drop it, I'm just... I, so, no, use the things. example of 3% into your contract is what I do. Or... Maybe look, a more realistic number is... Four five percent, and then we'll go down to three. Sure, I think that's a good idea. Well, and again, then what's the number? I want a number. Well, I would just do a hundred and then reduce it. But no, I like less is hers more. Realistic. You're not something at a hundred, right? You're going to get sued, and you're going to get your license lost. Well, I'm not showing your homes. But my point is, put in a number. Do not put in a range unless you're going to accept the bottom of the range every time. Would you do like two point seven? Nope. Is that a number? I watch Sesame Street, my favorite show, <laughs> the count. And when he would count, he would say one, two, three. He didn't say one, two, 2.7 to three, four. That is not a number. <laughs> if I asked you what the temperature was today, you could say, well, the low is 55 and the high is 82. What's the temperature now? Somewhere between that. Or four different numbers. Really a, a number. <laughs> <laughs> a number. <laughs> we good? A number. You should look right now. We're parking on the best stage in the world. Oh, well, here's my value proposition. I'm worth 3%. Now, between you and the transaction that's happening, you might make a decision. I know Greg's tight on money. I know he's got no extra money. The compensation of being offered is 2.7%. I, I don't want to try to squeeze right for the money, even if you thought yeah, I had it. I will, I'll, I'll accept what the seller is offering. I won't ask for the rest. But even though you and I up front, we agreed on something, right? A number? <laughs> A number. Yes, sir. Yeah, you may have covered this, and I might have dozed off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tom and I love numbers. <laughs> so we're, we're writing a. An offer, and uh, they're offering say 3.5 buyer broker compensation. Yep. I've got an agreement with my buyer for 3%. Do I have to specify in the offer that that additional half percent goes to the buyer? No, or because it it's going to get sent to your brokerage. Now, look in your here's what I would probably do: write the offer, get the commission deal turned, and then turn to the buyer and go, "Look, there's an extra half percent on the table. I showed you that when I did the compensation disclosure that they're overpaying me, right?" You know, how would you like that half back? I mean, do you want us to eventually negotiate that out of the price? Do you want it to go to closing costs? Whatever. But the office is not going to pay you more than you're contracted for. Right. It's like a multiple office situation. <laughs> We're trying to sweep the part of the seller. We could just concede it back to the seller. Though, yeah, right? you could put in there, uh, you know, listing broker slash seller offered compensation at 3.5%. And again, keep in mind the purchase agreement is supposed to be between the buyer and the seller. Yeah, yeah. Right? Now, however, we do have some terms in there that's going to be between the seller and the buyer's broker. So you could put in there buyer broker uh, uh, declines the offer at 3.5 and accepts an off, uh, a reduced offer at 3%. Yeah. I think now's the perfect time to go to the purchase agreement, though. Yeah, I know just we're, 10 minutes we're running left. time. Yes? So we were in a training yesterday where the trainer said, when you get the phone call on your listing asking what your seller is offering, you do not give them a number because that's a violation of the antitrust. You say put it into your offer. So are we allowed? Who taught that class? 
<laughs> a, a different firm? I mean, it just you don't have to name names, but a different firm? Yeah, and we, we can connect afterwards. On yeah, that's fine. But that's what our group was told yesterday. And depending and on who may have told you that, I might get, come to an agreement with them, but I'd love to hear their discussion as to why. Sure. My so, seller can authorize me to offer you the cooperating broker something else. I don't understand how their opinion is. It's antitrust, but I'd love to know who told you that. And I, I think might we come back to the group and go, I agree with them now. Yeah, let's move on to the purchase agreement. Okay, uh, okay we got that. And by the way, the non-exclusive listing, our buyer rep agreement has got the same language as the exclusive. The non-exclusive buyer has the same language as the exclusive buyer rep. So we're not going to cover some of these. Oh, wait. Uh, facilitator. Facilitator, same language. Yep. For the seller and the buyer. So the fact that we've already talked about this language. Okay, so this is the PA. Okay. There's going to be a change here before. Okay. This clarifies the buyer gives a written statement upon delivery of the written statement if the PA does not close for any reason related to financing, earns money forfeited to the seller. Clarifies some stuff, which really was clarified below, but agents didn't understand it. I don't know why they made the change, to be honest with you. But they did, so be aware of that. VA funding fee. Uh, in some cases, the VA funding fee is waived, so they added language that who's going to pay the funding fee if it's not otherwise waived. So that's just new language. So if you're working with a VA buyer and their VA funding fee is waived, obviously there is no, going to be no funding fee. But if it's not waived, then what's the proportion? How are we splitting that? So you just put a dash in that then if they are using VA, or do you write waived on Well, generally that? the buyer's going to find out from the lender whether their funding fee is waived, right? And we should be talking to the lender to find that out so when we fill out the PA, we know what's going on. Right, that but I'm question. saying if the lender says that is waived, then we can write on their waived like we've done in the past. Right, I mean, you know, you, you wouldn't put in split 50-50 if there's gonna be zero, right? Or it's a partial waiver, right, Brian? Okay, uh, purchase agreement. <clears throat> this is some language on uh, special assessments that they got, that they added. That talks about uh, special assessments uh, levied as of the date of this PA. It says, notwithstanding the foregoing, buyer shall assume any levied assessments that cannot be paid in the year of closing. There's some assessments that you can't prepay. Really? Yeah. Oh. They were saying Rochester is like one of the primary areas for that. <clears throat> and there's also some associations that have borrowed money at a certain interest rate with a certain investor, and he says, you cannot pay me back early. I hate when they throw this at the bottom of the page because it's so damn important. No, that's okay. But this is the big deal. This is the big change. Okay. So you're a listing agent and you've decided, or your seller's decided, let's offer 4% uh, in concessions to a buyer's agent to use however they want. We cannot, we cannot say that's for commissions, but the buyer can certainly say that will cover my commissions. Right? So <laughs> this Remember, my house is listed. I've got the refrigerator listed on the MLS sheet as being offered for sale. You write a purchase agreement. You don't put in the refrigerator. Does your buyer get the refrigerator? No. Not necessarily. They're not legally entitled to it because you didn't put it in the PA. Now, I might forget. I might leave it. I might go, I didn't want to take it with. I'm leaving it for them. Do they still want it? But if I don't ask for it, I don't get it. So keep in mind, we have a listing. The seller is offering concessions of $12,000, right? And the buyer says, well, I only need 1% for my closing costs. So up earlier in the PA where it says seller paid closing costs, there's 1%, okay? If the buyer and the buyer broker do not put this in and there was no public offering of commission, how much commission is the buyer's agent going to get for participating in the sale? <laughs> so let's read this. Seller's contribution to buyer's broker's compensation. Remember before I talked about commissions have flowed from the seller through the listing broker to any other participant in the past and can still do that this way, that way currently, right, with the new form and on the counter in the kitchen. That's how commissions are going to flow there. This is a payment directly from the seller 
to the buyer's broker. Now, no, it's not going to be a separate check. It's going to be taken care of at closing by the closers, right? But this talks about a request from the seller to pay the buyer's broker, which is just like the clause that I gave you a couple of months ago where you're being, you know, you're not receiving your full compensation. You know, seller agrees to pay Keller Williams for realty 0.3% as a, it, this kind of replaces this. So seller's contribution to buyer's broker, broker uh, compensation. Seller agrees to pay buyer's broker's compensation at closing blank percent of the selling price or blank dollars, which is in addition to any seller's contribution to buyer's closing costs paid at closing. So let's read that again, which is in addition to seller's contribution to buyer's closing costs. Remember, we had to list the, the part of the seller's paying directly to the buyer's, bro, or buyer's lender. This, so this amount here is in addition to that. So when you're doing your net sheets, right, you've got five offers, one offer, doesn't matter. You better make sure that this number is in your net sheet to your seller. Because if you forget, I'm the seller and I go to closing, and the closer says, oh, yeah, you're paying the other broker 3%, and I go, okay, so it was in the purchase agreement, but Ryan didn't do it in my net sheet. Who do you think should be for the mistake, Ryan? I don't want you to do that. So when you do your net sheets, seller paid closing costs and the seller paid commission. Be good with that. I think you should give a scenario. Um, I'm let you and me. I'm showing your house and yeah. I'm about to make this offer. Sell, and you saw, uh, uh, Melissa, you saw uh, the uh, an MLS where the seller's offering $12,000 worth of concessions to the buyer. I called you first and because I wanted to hear about this cooperating compensation and you're on the pickleball court. Uh -huh. so, you, so you told me like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like a, I think this one's a two percenter. Because Greg's got 10 listings and doesn't remember what each one is in. So yeah. Greg's not going to guess. You are not going to guess in the future unless you're willing to pay the price in the end. So I I went ahead and I got this broker broker compensation so agreement. I, I, I gave you a number in addition to concessions. Yeah, you did. So, so I told you I was offering two percent. Two percent when you called me on the phone. Yes. Okay, and then my MLS sheet said twelve thousand dollars worth of concessions. And now um, my buyers have an obligation to pay me two point seven percent. So what do I write in here? Uh, in, in that case. You could write in 0. 0.7. Thank you. Now, now, whether the seller is upfront offering concessions or not, right? I mean, how many sellers really want to pay buyers closing costs? I'm going to argue none of us want to. But if, uh, if an offer came in, Ryan, you're going to consider it, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, you're going to look at the net sheet. I mean, you're going to look at the PA. You're going to look at the net sheet and go, I didn't want to pay that $6,000 worth of buyers closing costs. Let's counter the offer six grand, or eight grand, or two grand, right? So this number can be in there. Now keep in mind, the buyer's agent is not supposed to collect more than they contracted. But what if Greg told the buyer, I'm the world's best agent, I get 4%, right? I might ask for something unreasonable here. And by the way, has anybody, has anybody ever run into what they would consider an unethical agent? You don't have to throw their names out because you might name the same person, but, but in theory, there are people out there that might convince somebody that, oh yeah, the standard commission for a buy broker agent is six percent. I think the key words on this section of the purchase agreement are the heading. It's the seller's contribution, sellers, not seller broker, seller's contribution to buyer's broker's compensation. And then at the bottom, it says this amount is in addition to the listing broker's offer of cooperating compensation, if any. Now, keep in mind, there are going to be some agents, right? Melissa <clears throat> called me. I said, Melissa, my seller is happily paying 2%. Remember that sign on the counter, Melissa, and the sign on the front? It said 2%, didn't it? I don't know. I showed like 12 houses. Oh, okay. So, Melissa, when she sits down and writes her offer, she's getting 2%. But because Melissa didn't go to any training, right? Melissa comes down here and says 2.7%. Uh, because that's the amount she has under her buyer broker agreement. So, if you're a listing agent, and you get this offer, I would say, Melissa, thanks for sending over the offer. I look forward to presenting to the seller tonight. A uh, couple of things. Um, I noticed you got 2.7, and I would probably do it in this order. 
Most I know she put 2.7 in on line 406, is that right? Is that? Well, of course, yes, absolutely. It, it, that's the amount that you've negotiated with your buyer, is that correct? Well, yeah. Okay, well, Melissa, do you remember, do you remember our, you're already getting 2% and Melissa's going to go, oh, I, I forgot about that, or I didn't know, or I thought this is where I put the whole deal in. Okay, I say, no, Melissa. Then, so what you're saying is you're just, I'm offering you two, you're missing the seven, is that point seven, right? Oh, I but Melissa, you're, right. you're going to have to rewrite your contract. Oh no, I'm so embarrassed. Well, but, okay, okay, we're all learning together. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a broker. <laughs> uh, I mean, By the way, having like a broker I'm license doesn't death. mean you're smart. <laughs> you got seventy percent on your broker's class. Right. Uh, but, so, a few years as ago. listing agents, can you understand if your seller signed this with two point seven in there, right? At the end of the day. You, all, we will the other broker the 2% we publicly offered them, or not oh, selling publicly, and the 2.7 they asked in here. So did your seller pay too much commission to that agent perhaps? Now, yes. remember, they're not supposed to accept more than they contracted for, but your seller's not getting the money back. Here's what Melissa's going to do. She's going to get 2 and 2.7, she's going to turn to the buyer and go, I'm not supposed to do this. Will you let me keep the extra 2? Hopefully Melissa's going to go to the buyer. You've got 2% coming your way. So I don't want you to cost your seller money by somebody else's misunderstanding. But let's we get through a couple of things because oh, sure. I know Greg has a tendency to talk way too much. Um, seller's disclosure statement, <coughs> but I'll stay around and answer any and all questions. There really aren't any more that pertain to the NAR settlement, and we can cover these at a future time. Okay. Is that good for everybody? Yep. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions on the key forms, the listing contract, the offers of compensation, how we can do that, the purchase agreement? Uh, I don't have a listing appointment tonight, but if I had one and I sat down with, and we signed contracts with the old forms, today's August forms, 2023 yep. listing agreement. And you don't have a purchase agreement by August 1st. We may need to amend those. Okay. Because the only change really is just like a couple phrase words, but a, a couple key words in a phrase before it breaks out the, you know, what you pay out to a, a co-op realtor as representing the buyer. <laughs> That's really kind of the main change. So on Plus August 1st, page. do I start <laughs> using the new one? The new one, it doesn't go into effect till 17th. Right. Uh, you, you, the form changes on August 1st are the ones you're going to okay. use. Right. And you know, between August 1st and 17th on your new listings there, we'll be able to publish the compensation that the seller offered in the listing contract in there. Okay. Or you'll be able to list, list concessions in, in the uh, uh, bar, our agent, agent comments. So we do an amendment to the listing. <laughs> Which we is a new form. To, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Since I've been... Uh, taught by the best that train never to trust something some guy says on over a pickleball tournament <laughs> on a phone call, and I like to have it in writing, and I go to their website, and if MLS has mysteriously changed in the past compensation, I would only assume a web page that's privately owned could also be changed over time. I obviously should be taking a screenshot of that M uh, website. No, well, they, public keep in mind, disclosure. I could change the compensation offered to another out. broker tomorrow. That's, that's why we want it, this. We want this timely file. Hey, Greg, you sent me this two weeks ago. Is this still in place? Yes, it is. So if that's signed, and then the bottom of whatever said page of the purchase agreement, in addition to if necessary, is done, regardless. I don't care about pickleball you, conversations. You might want to do your due diligence, which is to verify with the agent, hey, Steve, did this change? Send him an email. Steve, was nice talking to you. Remember the compensation you disclosure you sent me two weeks ago or the commission deal? Uh, I just want to make sure that's, that's still in effect. Got it. Should be pretty good. Sorry. Oh, all good. I'll stick around if you have any questions. And what are we talking about at 1230? Well, you have a whole hour from 1230 until 130. I'm sure we will discuss, continue to discuss a lot of this. But the premise of the training at 1230 is why through all these years have there been two lines where you can pay out the cooperating realtor representing the buyer, either representing or assisting. Like whoever assists a buyer and why would they? Well, Greg has given me a lot of scenarios as I've asked him over the last three or four years, but I want you guys to hear those scenarios as well because as realtors get creative, I think there may be more people doing that. 
So, so what's the difference between assisting and representing a buyer? 1230, very exciting. I do want to say, and, and this is important, thanks for coming today. We think this information is hyper valuable and we will continue this discussion uh, all the way through change to make. With that in mind, we're going to have to start. I did a teaser today on the Facebook page a couple times. I said be here because I have a special announcement and I'm sure you're not here for that. You're here for Greg and the form to, you know, stay out of jail. <laughs> Uh, but I have a, a great um, a great announcement for you. Uh, we found our MCA candidate. She is currently the MCA at the Fargo Keller Williams office in North Dakota, and she's <coughs> moving to the Twin Cities, and she's starting with us on September 9th. Her name is Emma Wold, and she is fantastic. Your leadership team and I have uh, grilled her and interviewed her, and uh, she comes highly, highly, highly recommended from her OP. Uh, so you'll see that familiar face around here starting September 9th. So that's my announcement. Thank you. So again, thank you for coming. Next week we'll be having a panel with multiple agents to discuss how we're going to talk about these things with our clients. So, you know, the actual dialogues that we want to have and, and, and kind of contribute to that, make sure we get the practice we need so that these words are natural to us instead of something that we're just trying to get right with the most important people we're going to talk to. Uh, enjoy your half hour, but I do want to see as many of you back as possible talk about the differences between assisting your client and looking at them or representing them. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, how many buyers have heard you? Know, I'm mad at her.